welcome to the God is Geek podcast. I'm your host, Adam Cook, and it's a very special, intimate podcast this week, because it's just me. Only joking, Adam Carroll's here. Hi, Ad, you alright? I am good, my friend. How are you? I'm alright. I was toying with, I think, the first two times I tried to get away with the Adams Family as a top podcast episode title. Um, or was Have we done three on our own See, or this four? Is the thing. I don't know. Like, we've definitely done the sequel. Definitely. Um, and I don't know if we've done a third, but we can go with it and just think and make it a trilogy. And if we yeah. if we feel like we could do a quad trilogy down the line. Oh, wow, the quad trilogy. Like like the Alien films were once. But um, <laughs> what you'll notice about this podcast, right, is look, there's no chatter about weird foods and stuff. Because, listen, we've reduced it out. It's not Adam or me. The Adams are, are fine. The Adams are all right. We're great. It's the other guys. It's the other guys. They bring it out of you, don't they? Always. Always. Uh-huh. Like, I just feel yeah. like I have to do this and talk about it when the other guys are here. Because, like, not everyone sees how it is behind the curtains here. And, you no. know, it always... The pressure. It's always made out that I'm the strange one eating the strange food. But, you hmm. know... Maybe well... Let's just think about it a small bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Adam, let's just think about it a small bit. I was with you and <laughs> I was with you till you said that, and I started thinking about Pringles, who, as I said on Twitter, should be sponsoring us, because I thought about this, right? If you haven't listened to the Pringles episode, we're not going to spoil what you did, but you should go back and listen to it, because it's a highlight of, um, well, it's a highlight. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> um, like I was thinking Pringles should, should sort of sponsor the podcast, because they should say, they're so good, you want to regurgitate them to eat them a second time. That's how good they are. Um, I mean, I've given away what you did. Listen. Adam, you have... You have you have been playing games, right? We're gonna just talk, we're gonna, listen. It's just us, mm-hmm. so we can we can talk about what we want to, which is video games, mm-hmm. which is you know. I've been, you have played something. I've I've been playing okay. forty two games. You have, and I have been resisting because I'm gonna let you in on a secret. As much oh, as I love Nintendo, Nintendo and I enjoy Nintendo games, and I always have actually from from the. Very, I had a NES. I had a NES, definitely. That was I think one of my first consoles. I had Commodore sixty four and all that before, but I had a NES. Then I made the, let's say, insane decision to go from, from NES to Mega Drive rather than SNES, uh, which in hindsight is just nuts because yeah. the SNES's library is ridiculous. But the, 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 the Mega Drive, or to some of our listeners, the Genesis, I had the Japanese import one, which was like a sort of maroonish, reddish color on the front of the the black box. Yeah, yeah. You are playing. I'm guessing your version is called the Sega Mega Drive Mini. That's this. That's the one. Um, forty two games. 40 Showing the other lads how it's done. Two games. Um, exactly, exactly. Like that's a that's a serious amount of games there, especially for no. I, I'm gonna have to clarify first that like. When it comes to the Mega Drive, I've had my time with it, at, like mm. back in the day and stuff. But I've mm. always been Nintendo, as many of you probably would guess at this stage. But <laughs> um, like first, where 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 does the Mega Drive stand for you? Like, do you have the nostalgic games there? Like, do you know? Yeah, man. Like I other mean, than Sonic, be... no and things, obviously. Well, I was gonna say they're gonna be the cliches because they're gonna yeah. be Sonic Two, my favorite <laughs> Sonic game. Uh, they're gonna be Streets of Rage Two, which is just. I mean, one of the all-timers for me. Do you know I'm going to go a bit of a different route there, and I'm going to say at one point the Cool Spot game. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a big deal in our town. Like, I think I I got that from an import store. I had to get some weird cartridge that the the cartridge went onto to be allow me to play it. Mm-hmm. Um, I played virtual racing. You know, I, I can't. I've got a bad memory anyway. But those are the ones that stand out to me. I mean, yeah. Echo the Dolphin. I know is beloved. I never really, I, I don't quite get why that game's so. Beloved. Well, listen, I mean, this so this thing. Obviously, look, I've been playing the Mega Drive Mini, and it's been it's been really well received. People are there; they're loving it. Um, I have been going through the games, and something like Echo the Dolphin, which, yes. as you said, is is pretty loved by fans. I only I only remember that game as a game where. I hadn't a clue what I was supposed to do. Like, I just remember swimming along and jumping up out of the water and going back down. And then, it's only now recently with 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 the Mega Drive Mini coming out that I'm. Yeah. There's a lot of videos of showing off the games that are there and stuff. Like, Echo just seems, uh, uh, like so hard and so vague. Is it? Is it? Is it a long game? I like- I, I, I just don't know, man. I, like. 
it, it's I I think it's only like well actually do you know what let me check that there um because I always feel like I I've started it like a hundred times but every time it just seems like oh this is going to be a significant time investment so I just don't carry on yeah like and this is the thing like you you got a four and a half hours it's saying here. On oh, Holland okay. Street for main story and main in extras is five and a half, which is quite meaty for a game like this, because mm. it was only last night, um, as a recording right now, I finished World of Illusion, which is oh, uh, just oh god yeah, there's another good one yeah Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck um never played is it before the, is that on the Mega Drive Mini yeah wow because I just figured licensing wise that would be a nightmare um so. So wow, this, Castle of Illusion. Castle of Illusion is there and World of Illusion. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is okay. like pretty pretty big games to have on this. And it's kind of maybe why a lot of fans would be inclined to buy this. Because I, I only remember there like recently, well, it came out I think last year or something. But mm. the Sega Mega Drive collection came out for the switch oh yeah it came out for everything yeah it came out for everything and i know there was previous ones on ps3 and xbox 360 and stuff but this one came out for like the switch and stuff and in my head i'm kind of going okay why would i get the mini over that because that little collection has like 50 games or something yeah, loads of them yeah yeah but when you actually go through the list there's quite a few you're missing such as castle of illusion world of illusion um artworm gym is on the mega drive mini but not yep. on the other one so these are the kind of ones that i remember playing um so last night i ended up playing world of illusion and i did a co-op and like that game only takes like an hour and a half but it's very easy to be honest but um there's something there's something insanely charming about going back and attempting to like finish these types of games again, yeah. Um, I know, no, like, the, and this isn't what the Mega Drive has done. Like, obviously, the the, the SNES Mini has done it, the NES Mini has done it. It's it's just some like you know. I think a lot of people. Well, I could be totally wrong in this, but I feel people will buy it. Go, this is incredible. I love this. Look at all these games. Put so, it on. Yeah. Play. So the the same as all the other mini consoles. Yeah, yeah which is which isn't. It isn't a, it isn't really a, a bad thing at all. It's just like I have this now and there it is and I have all these games and I'll play it sometime and you kind of never do and it just sits aside. Mm. But when you when you kind of um just go for it and go I'm going to play this game from start to finish. It's it's really enjoyable because when we finished World of Illusion last night, I was kind of like that was that was a lot of fun. That was like that yeah. was just that was just charming, it was enjoyable and in the collection as well, you got like say, Alex Kidd, which a lot of people are familiar with, uh, Comic Zone, which has kind of been on, like nearly everything that the Mega Drive has released yep. in its collections. But it's still such a cool game, and I actually think if Comic Zone was something that was released today, it would go down really well in its style. Mm. Um, you got the likes of see the ones that really stood out for me were the likes of Fantasy Star Four is there. You got um, Monster Hunter, um, you got like Toe Jam and Earl, obviously, and then there's like Street Fighter yeah, Two. Like, but like Toe Jam and Earl has aged as, and this is so people say, as a yeah. fan of the first two games. Mm. Um, but like the new one I played, that was this year, by the way. Toe Jam and Earl, the new one was this year. Yeah, and I played it, and I'm like, it's all right, it's that again. But like we've we've all just we've moved on. Games are different now. Like yeah, they're just different. Yeah, and and uh, I'd, I'd want it because of the nostalgia. But I know because I've I've got the snares and the PlayStation one. I mm. know I wouldn't play them. Yeah, yeah. And that's what stopped me is that I don't have what is it sixty seventy quid to blast on a nostalgic item. I know I won't play. I know, and I know. That's realism for me for a change. But like, yeah, but trust me, the, the allure is real because it's that was my that was kind of you know I loved that. I loved my Mega Drive. I loved it. And I but, think I think that's mm. one of the things that people are like like saying is so amazing about this actual mini version is because it's so it is so super nostalgic in mm. in its even like um menu and stuff like the music that plays and the fact you can change the language to like if you change the language to like Japanese it changes all the artwork of the games and stuff as well yeah um you can a to z them you can put them in like spine and stuff like that it, it it's kind of these little cool features that are within it but yeah. Really, all I'll say though is 
and this is just me speaking, it's like with all the praise these things can get and how great they all are and it's great to kind of go back and experience the nostalgia of it all. I get kind of annoyed that there just isn't fucking like 40 more games on us. Yeah, without modding it, obviously. Without modding yeah. it. And like yeah. when you see something like the other previous release that have come out for Se- for Sega and stuff and you kind of go, well, okay, here's this mini version of the console it's like a very good price to be honest i think at like 70 bucks or something i think that's like i think it's really good like with the two controllers and stuff but when i look at it i see the likes of uh like streets of rage 2 is there Mm -hmm. but like if you get the other collection for like the switch or something you get like streets of rage streets of rage 1 2 and 3 and that's right you know you'll get sonic 3 and Sega have also got this thing they do on mobile. I think it's called Sega Ages. I think where they're just releasing like a new game for that service on mobile regularly. Like yeah, they they just keep putting out sort of new game. Well, old new old games. If mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, and like the thing about it is when you get something like um like Golden Axe, right? Which like oh, go, like Gold- there go. There's a game. Yeah, there's a game for you. Like Golden Axe is superb, but it's almost like. Uh, in ways Mario like the very first Super Mario Brothers it's just like you, you've you we've all played it It's it's been on everything you can play it nearly anywhere at this stage and when the console like this comes out why don't you just put Golden Axe 1, 2 and 3 like mm. throw them all in there like I I don't see why it can't yeah, be you're right you're right do you know and there's it's a few things like that that just and even if that's to hike up the price again to make it an even hundred hundred bucks I'd still buy it if all these sequels were on it because you're, you're even missing the Toe Jam and Earl oh, sequel I don't know man like a hundred a hundred there is pushing it for a mini console don't you think uh, I, I don't I don't know man like if you're getting two controllers with it and you get a lash of co-op games on it the, the kind of sitting on the couch co-op feeling when you have a friend over or something for Christmas with the kids and all this jazz it, it it will benefit. It would benefit mm-hmm. rather than putting like, I don't know. There's some games on it that would be like I I hear the Tetris game that's on this is supposed to be shit. Right. I I can't remember Tetris even being on Mega Drive. So, and that's the thing that surprised me as well is I didn't know the likes of Contra, which when I played it was Pro Protector, which because that's what it's named in Europe. So Pro mm. Protector here. I remember playing that on the NES, and I did not know that it got onto the Mega Drive. Same as right. Same as Street Fighter Two. I never knew that that made it to the Mega Drive. I mean, I played that on SNES, but yeah, I, I'm with you. Do you know? I, like I was like, I this think is... it came later. I want to say it came later because I don't remember it being on Mega Drive when the SNES one was out. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 a weird one. It's 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 kind of for me the experience of this little console was. It's definitely worth the money. It offers some cool nostalgia. It offers some like interesting games like those uh, World and Castle of Illusion kind of games. Mm. And there's a couple of like these JRPG ones in there too that I've never had the chance to play. So realistically, it, se- it seems to be a solid console all around. And if it- people are kind of going, it's the best mini version ever like mini console ever it probably is it just probably is saying that it hasn't got mario world on it it hasn't got mario Kart on it <laughs> well see that's the thing you but know? i think the reason being is it just holds once again so much nostalgia but i think it just has the mm. most games yeah that's fair and that's yeah. i think really where it's where it's coming out because i think is it is it the snes only has like 21 games i'm not sure something along that line playstation hasn't got many yeah, so it's it's a good console. It's fun. It 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 all runs well. Um, and like you know, like there, there as I said, there's Sonic. There's Sonic One, Two. Is Sonic Three on us? No. So the Sonic wow. One, Sonic that One, seems... Two, and then there's mm. that fucking Sonic game. That's like a Sonic Spinball. It's got Sonic Spinball on it. Yeah, so it's it's pretty good. So I Son- like Sonic Spinball, man. I'm sorry. Uh, it's weird. It's weird because I feel like the the camera just isn't fast enough to keep up Has, with you. Hasn't it got like a single digit frame rate that game? Like I don't remember it running well even as a kid. Um, yeah, it it runs kind of strange in, especially in like the movement of Sonic. Sonic is mm. way like because at the start of each level you run out onto the the board, you jump in, and then you off you go. It's pinball. Um. Mm. 
But Sonic feels heavier and he kind of looks a bit fatter. It's kind of strange. Yes. But um, it's still there. Like, you know, for Sonic yeah. fans, it's cool. That stuff is cool. But the likes of Sonic the Hedgehog, for example, I, I, I can't really see anybody ever turning that on unless you have a like, kid. Who's going to play through that again? Yeah, but they're not going to want to play that, man. Well, they're not. If I, if I had a... If, if I had a kid and I was like, here's this Mega Drive Mini and there's the Sonic games and they went, oh, let's play Sonic. I'd be like, okay, let's play Sonic the Hedgehog 2 because it's co-op. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But they couldn't, they just couldn't, you can't release this kind of a thing without putting Sonic. No, I, no, that's fair. And that's just that's, how these yeah. things work. But no, um, right. overall, man, it's, it's, it's a very enjoyable little thing. And you know, I kind of think the more these kind of things come out, I think it'll be really enjoyable, like, to have on your shelves even, like, you know, mm. like, to just pull that down and just plug it in, because it's very easy to access, it's very easy to kind True. of set up, and yeah. for the price that it is, I'm happy with it, I, I I would recommend it. So, speaking of recommendations then, a game that I cannot recommend highly enough that I am addicted to is Indivisible. I cannot wait um, to play this. I, I think I was about, like, five or six hours in last week, and now I'm 13 or 14, um, man, this game just keeps getting better. It just keeps getting better for me. Um, so, so before we go out, last week we briefly discussed this. Yes, we tried to. Yeah. We tried to. Can you clarify it any more in terms of its gameplay now? With with the hours you've put in, are you able to explain? It's, no, it's still the same game we described. But what I've because one of the things is right. It's one of these these RPGs where you get quite a big party. You can only ever have four on the on the screen to fight with. But you you kind of consistently getting new characters. Like I think I think I must have nine or ten now, total. Um, and there's definitely slots left. I haven't even unlocked everyone. And and it's weird, right? Because there's a point where you think, oh man, another new character, really? Like I've got enough now. And then they do something just interesting enough that an hour later, you find another character. And you're annoyed because you have to take the other party back person back out your party because they become like one of your mains. Yeah. So they are all and like even fourteen hours in I was getting a new character and I and I gen again I was like, ah, this is I don't need any more. This is just stupid. Like there's too many. And then she's become one of my mains because she does something defensively that nobody else does. So for example, you know, you'll come up against enemies that are you have, I think we mentioned you have to like break their guard and with um Ajna She's the best one to do that. You press, you, you attack up. You do her up attack, which is an overhead axe attack, and then you press down on her attack, which is a kind of sweep with her axe. But yeah. That combo breaks someone's shield so that everyone else can nail them as well. Now there is another uh, character I, I can't remember her name begins with a Q. Um, she's like a shield character. She fights with her shield. She can also do the up and down combo to break them. But say you 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 don't have her in the party, then you are relying on your always ever present Ajna, the main character, to be the only one who can break these other characters. But beyond that, there are characters that, like if you if you hit them with magic attacks like fire, yeah. it heals them. So you can get yourself in situations where you've got all these magical characters and even like Ajna's special, like a, a three, a level three tier special is a magical attack and you're just healing them. So it can, the difficulty is dependent on you learning because you can see the enemies but mostly before you have to fight them. It's one of those games where you can see them and, and you can actually, kind of like in Dragon Quest, you can you can go up to them and hit them to get like an early hit in. Um, but like it just opens up mm. insanely like where there's there's, there's, there's like a, a boat a kind of final fantasy like a boat where you can travel from to three different places currently wow it, it kind of goes that deep it, it goes that big yeah <laughs> um but like i say this character i got she's a pirate she's the one where the boat comes from and i she's one of these and there's a few like this where you've got a skill you can use so even though you've got three attack po- points so you can do three attacks when you're fully ready to go um some of them have got like a, a move that doesn't actually damage them. It's sort of like hers. It's like she steals lo- like coin off of them. But doing that ups your attack for when you finally do an actual physical attack. So with her, or you can or like Dar, who's one of the fir- is, is the first character you you meet. He he can do his down attack is that. So he like charges up to give you like three attacks that are charged. Um, and hers, like she goes from doing no damage, like just steals coins three times, so that when you press her down an attack, she does this kind of shoulder charge which does like a thousand damage which is a lot mm-hmm. um 
And so I was like, oh, she's actually really useful. And then I got another character, and he's really useful because his down attack attacks all enemies within the sort of area. So again, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I think I will keep playing him because he's really useful. And then I got a character that completely blew my mind because uh, she, her attacks, she's water-based. So whenever she attacks, she leaves little puddles lying around. And then if you do a down, or is it down or up? I forget which, but it's a down or up attack. It makes it sort of activates those puddles so that if you run across them on your attack, you heal. Where if they run across them, it damages them. And then on top of that, I found another character who's got like this cool defensive mood uh, move. So she can run out. She's like plant-based. So she can plant a seed in front of the, an enemy. And then when they run to attack you, they get hit by the seed because it grows out and it stops their attack. So you can, with her in the party, use her three... If you get her ready to do three attacks, plant uh, plant a plant in front of each of, say, the three enemies on screen, meaning you know they can't even hit you on their next turn. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just every time you get a new character, it's just it, it, it so, breaks the boundaries of what you think is possible. And you've got this parry system where every enemy... So say a simple enemy comes and he's got... One of the soldiers is like of the military guys has got like a kick and it's quite easy to time you just press if if you're if you're dar and you're on my up level so you've got like a two characters in the middle one up one down so it's it's like the, it literally corresponds to the playstation controller that look imagine the square triangle cross and circle buttons that's what the formation of your party is okay and each of the buttons square triangle cross and circle corresponds to their location on in that party formation so if you're a soldier and you're attacking me uh, and you're hitting where the triangle button would be, you press triangle to time that parry. But some of them do like six attacks at once, and, go, <laughs> and you have to time that parry. Like, bam, 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 bam. And when you do that, you build up your sort of special meter, and each of the characters has got specials, and some of them are like heals. Like, so um, the fire woman you meet quite early on, I've forgotten the name of, uh, begins with R, uh, forget, I forget the name. There's a lot of characters. But her level one tier special it heals the party her level three is just this almighty fire attack so there's just so much experimentation and i there's a guy who carries a bird who i thought was a bit useless but then i their down attack literally is like a swoop and it does massive damage so you can queue up these attacks and it it's it's just it's, it, i tell you what man it's in my top 10 and the longer i play wow. it it's creeping up and up and up into that top 10 it sounds like it's constantly staying fresh for you considering yeah. like is this as you said, another character, but like, it's like, how many characters do you have at the moment? I, I think about 10. I think I've got nine or 10 and there's definitely at least and like, one do you slot find your, Do you find yourself using them all? Yeah, because you, although they seem to slightly level up as you don't play them, they don't fully level up. So you want to keep them in your party because they've mm. all got individual skills. Okay. So like, um, there's a guy who can heal. And as he's leveled up, his attacks actually come pretty good, but his heal, he can heal at like 4,600 health. And some of my characters have only got that. So, like, that's super useful in battle, boss battles. Um, mm-hmm. And that, this is just the battle system I'm talking about, right? This is just the battle system. Take that out of, out of your mind for a minute. And there's a Metroidvania going on here. Yeah. So you go to an area and you're taught a skill. Like, the first one you get is... Uh, it's, it's the axe one, where you jump and hit the attack button and you put an axe in the wall to give you a second sort of push-up to get you a bit higher. But then there's ledges that even that can't reach. And then later on you get a skill where you get a spear and you can use the spear to kind of pole vault up into the air to get you even higher and then i'm not going to spoil any more than that but then there's more skills and more skills there's it just keeps giving you new abilities um so you want to go back to other areas because you know there are hidden items that you couldn't reach but you now can and and on top of that the writing's it's kind of whip smart man like there's there's some funny clever writing that there's a you go and there's these, there's these weird sort of twins that kind of try and finish each other's sentences, and you say about I'm going to kick your you know you've got to let me through I'm going to kick your ass and then they basically say no you can you can you know if you want to fight we'll fight later in the arena and then one of your friends let's like, say who's in your head comes out and these two women it is and Ashna's a female and the uh, fire woman I've forgotten the name of she comes out and basically says what is it with guys why do they always want to fight later why can't we just have the fight now and it's kind of like poking fun at that JRPG yeah, thing yeah. of oh I've met you but we're going to fight later she's right why don't we just fight now and then like 20 minutes down the line you fight them and beat them obviously because it's a boss battle and there's a lot of that kind of writing that's constantly kind of witty and poking fun at the genre but never in a way of like 
Yeah, but because I remember once like complaining about The Witcher, there's that that quest with the goat where you have to get the goat and ring the bell mm-hmm. to get him to follow you. And I remember yeah, in the yeah. review I mentioned that, saying how they've poked fun at it, but they've still actually made you do it. So it doesn't work for me, that particular quest, because as I say, you're making fun of the, all these games that do it, but then you are making me do it. But whereas in this game, because it's just like a, let's say, a side-scrolling 2. Point, no, it's yeah, it's 2D, a side-scrolling sort of almost beat them up come JRPG you're, you sort of forget about that conversation and then they crop up naturally anyway. It's ju- It genuinely is... Like let's say I played the prototype four years ago and I never in my wildest dreams imagined it. I can't stop playing it. It's that's, so, that's so good, man. Like, yeah, I'm very excited to get on that. Easily one of the best games I've played this year. Um, Excellent. We, we, obviously, because there's just the two of us, we're gonna. There's a, I've got a couple of news bits down I want to talk about. Um, I do want to just quickly mention John Wick Hex, the game. Uh <laughs> is are you I, not as excited as the movies? Have so, you seen the movies? No, I haven't, right? So I'm gonna everything I say now needs to be prefaced and, and, and qualified, I suppose, by the fact I haven't seen the movies. They are very much atop the list of I need to get round to these at some point. But I know the gist. Do you know what I mean? I know the kind of balls to the wall action. Yeah. I know the dog stuff, you know, I know it, it's it's become pop culture hasn't it by now you know yeah pretty much we, we we i've not seen them i know a bit about them um i i'm not gonna go on about this game because gary will be here probably next week and he will talk about this and grid uh but i, I certainly don't like it as much as gary does so in i would suggest if you want reference for what i'm talking about go and have a look at our video review on youtube.com slash god is a geek so the way i understand john wick and you you've seen the films haven't you yeah yeah or at least one of them. I mean, you know, you've seen, you know, you know more than I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, is is he's kind of like a, an action hero, but obviously not a not like. I, I suppose is it modern sort of John McClane kind of doesn't want to be one of those, but he's kind of got in that situation. But it's also he's revenge for. It's 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 more just revenge, like especially okay. when the first movie anyway. And he's well trained, but he's retired, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So in this game, it is like. Do you know how in Super Hot you do all this stuff and then you watch the replay and it shows you it in full motion and you're like, oh, I was badass there. <laughs> yeah, it's unreal. <laughs> but this it is, but this kind of has the opposite effect to me. So this is like a strategy game where there's meters that you control what you can do and you can, you know, have limited ammo and, and cover systems and all that kind of thing. Uh, and then it shows the replay. And to me, the replays just make make it look really janky and rough. Like it makes it look... Like it, it, it is a replay of what you've done, but it doesn't make you look cool like John Wick would look cool. Yeah, um, and I also just found it incredibly complex and just not what I was looking for, uh, and not not what I was expecting from that kind of game. I think it's cool that a game's been made about John Wick and it isn't a first person or third person shooter. I think it's cool that this kind of it's it's a different. It's certainly not the. If someone said, "Oh, they're making a John Wick game," you would think probably. Gears of War style third person or well, DMC or yeah I I think I was saying it last week but I kind of when I initially saw screenshots of this I felt like we were going to get a Hotline Miami kind of John Wick game absolutely that would be again yeah absolutely um, but I just think now seeing the game and what it is it's it's definitely not as fast and it's definitely more tactical but I like some of the stuff in it like so I find that enemies just keep appearing out of nowhere. Yeah, I, I feel like you walk around a corner into darkness, and then there's oh, there's an enemy there, and it's like that doesn't seem fair because I don't think there's any way of scouting. And then they their timer lets them shoot you, and they kind of shoot you, but they're almost their gun is almost in your shoulder shooting you, and then you shoot them back and kill them. But like, is John Wick get shot a lot and not get hurt? I don't know. I mean, maybe. Um, not particularly. No, John Wick is just a straight up like just a, a badass, and that's it. Like you know, okay. and. It's just great action, and I think the whole Keanu Reeves thing really steps it up even further again. Because, like, yeah, in terms of a story, like it's it's very it's very straightforward. Like, it, yeah. it, that's all I'll say. But, um, like, I don't know really what I wanted when they said they were going to announce a John Wick game. Um, I mean, I'm it, in the minority. I should say it seems to have reviewed very well. Um, yeah, and it's not like it's not like I hate it, but it's just not for me. Like, I like strategy games. This one isn't for me. Like, it doesn't. See, I you mean, just, again, you, again, you just nailed people... it there. You just yeah. nailed it there now for me. And that is using the word strategy. Like, 
it's that's not what I want. That's not an element that I want within the game. So like, I yeah, but what to... I'm saying is I like that. Like indivisible, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is heavily strategy based because you have to have the right characters. You have to get the move set right to get the you know there's a there's a chain. You know, you yeah. chain moves together to keep you can keep them in. The, you can air juggle in indivisible if you have the right characters. Um, this to me, again, people also say how great it looks. N- not for me. I I don't. It, it just didn't. Th- no, it's, it's just one of those games where it just did nothing for me. Yeah, and that's fine. That's fine because it, other people seem to be really enjoying it. But personally speaking, I played it and was just it just didn't it didn't work for me, man. Like, mm. I like I, I think like going for the strategy thing that they're that they're doing. If that appeals to someone like yourself and stuff, then that's that's great. Well, like but I, say, I, I would think, say I think that's cool. It just didn't do it for me. Yeah, I think when after watching the movies personally, I just want off the wall like I, I i don't want anything to fucking try and change the game and games i just want another like enter the matrix feel stranglehold yes. kind of thing i just want bullets and just diving everywhere max pain kind of style and but like you know do you remember because it's bithel games obviously you know yeah. like uh the it was volume wasn't it the other the the, the, the one yes after. so volume you had direct control didn't you like you moved with the left stick i think mm-hmm so, but it was also kind of strategy based and time based in that you had to, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. It's it's kind of that taken to the one extreme, if you will, like of it being literally hex based and, um, yeah, it just it just isn't. It just, I'm not saying it's bad. I think there's merit to it, and I think it's cool they've gone for this idea, which is totally against what you'd expect, which is also yeah, that's cool. Um, but just in a very crowded window for me, it just didn't uh, yeah, ignite I, my I, fire, man. <laughs> I also just, like, I wonder, and this shouldn't be the case, obviously, but I just wonder if the fact you have not seen the movies kind of... Yeah, absolutely as well. That's why I said that's important. Yep, because I do, I do feel when you see the movies, you're just like, John Wick is just unreal. Like, and I think that's just how it is. That's how that's how his character is perceived by everyone, like John Wick movies. It's like, you haven't seen John Wick? What? You, what? How have you not seen John Wick? That's how it is, you know? Mm. Um, and I think... You going into this, you're like, I'm just moving Keanu Reeves around in, in this strategic kind of manner and Yeah, but even then I'm expecting excitement. Mm, and it just didn't it just didn't give me that, man. Shame. 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 Um before we get into listener correspondence this week, I just want to mention it just it's a bit of a shorter pod this week. It's just the two of us, but there's a couple of news stories broke last week that uh, I think I think are worth talking about. One's I don't think we're gonna have much to say because I think we're probably both gonna agree, but Doom Eternal we spoke about crowded windows. Doom Eternal yep. has got out of the crowded window and moved into another one because Doom Eternal now is coming <laughs> on March twentieth, which is the same day as Animal Crossing. Um, <laughs> Two uh, totally different. I actually like. I I just laughed when I saw that day. The, the, those two games coming out two the same games, day. right? They're totally different, <laughs> but are both on my highest, most wanted list. Mm, yeah. So, but basically, they've said what you'd expect. They just want it to be the best game and they need more time for that. Um, that's six months, really, isn't it? Well, it's not six months. It's f- sort of three and a half, four months, but mm. it's a, it's announcing it six months in advance. I am personally happy to wait as until it's ready. Don't get me wrong, I want that game bad, but I am absolutely happy that they're making another one of those Doom games Yep, all the time you need. All the time yeah. you need. And, and it- what's the N- Nintendo saying? Is it Miyamoto that said, you know, a bad game's bad forever, a delayed game can be, you know... You know, made better sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, not the quote, but it's like that. I think, like, even the response to this has been positive all around. I think everyone's like, yeah, cool, nice one. And I just like seeing that because I just feel, look, we have enough to fucking play. It's yeah. all grind. Doom Eternal will come out. It'll probably be banging. And that's the way it is. I would expect so, The yeah. first one But on top of this as well, it's kind of cool. They ended up saying they're going to release Doom 64 as well. Yeah. If you, Which is... You know, you've got... Um, not history, but have you got like fondness for that? Um, I wouldn't say it's like my like my my other favorite Doom would be three. Um, and then like sixty four, yeah, sixty four. Controversial, I know, I know, but I just I loved the horror side of us. I loved how dark it was. Um, but sixty four, yeah, I've played a bit of it. Um, but I just. I just like those kind of announcements always. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Same day as well. Uh, All right. The only thing I wasn't overly f- sort of happy with is that they announced it as a pre-order bonus. I kind of thought that was going to be a as an apology, have the game. Because uh, you still got to pre-order to get it, which is... Yeah. I mean, they're not going to give stuff away for free, but I don't know. It's an interesting one, that, that thing you said, though, as an apology. Because I always feel that, like, developers never need to apologise 
for delaying something because no, we're right. doing fuck all for them but just going to buy the game so <laughs> yeah, well, well but, in but ways well it's, like, well it's left me I want to just run this by you what it's left us with okay this is I had a look at 2020 okay mm-hmm. January starts off you know I think okay you've got Yakuza Like a Dragon which is Yakuza 7 Dragon Ball Z Kakarot um, Crystal Chronicles Remastered Tokyo Mirage Sessions uh, the Switch version, The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, I don't know what that is, Journey to the Savage Planet. So January, you know, I would say that's a quiet month to ease you into you know, being back at work in January and everyone's had their break. Then February comes, and we've got Ori and the Will of the Wisps, The Last of Us Part 2, and Iron Man VR. And then March, when we've got Final Fantasy VII Remake, Watch Dogs Legion, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Doom Eternal, and Vampire the Masquerade's Bloodlines 2... And you know, then after that, with April, we've you know we've just got Cyberpunk, and then May, Marvel's Avengers. Twenty twenty yeah. is looking strong. Yeah, it is. Oof. It is. Um, twenty twenty is also the year of the PlayStation Five, Adam. No, this is an interesting one. In mm. in ways where, first off, how did you feel about the announcement? I thought it was so random. I am not a fan of. I'm not a fan of outlets having exclusives in this way. Um, it doesn't work for me. I, that, Wired is who they did it with before, so they have obviously got some long-term agreement with, with Wired to announce details, you know, as and when they are willing to. We kind of figured it was 2020 anyway. With, you know, they've not mentioned it again, so it kind of had to be holiday. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, I just. There's another story during the rounds at the moment that there's talk of a lot of redundancies at Sony, like you know, I, yeah, that aren't in America, and it's. I don't want to get into too much because we do see a little bit behind the curtain. Like I know that the, the the there was someone at Sony who we worked with that just left Sony, but I ne- we never really asked why. Um, and that person had been there a long time, and the person that we work with at Sony now, we've known for a long time too, and, and it did make me worried because I will say that Sony are actually very, their PR, who we deal with, are very good at their job, very good at their job. Uh, we have a good relationship with Sony, and, you know, like it's, they're not, it just, I don't know what's going on here. I hope they're not doing what I think they're doing, which is that Sony of america are taking over everything and we run the show because that usually means that europe suffers yeah uh microsoft kind of already do that they don't have a huge european or certainly not uk sort of presence when it comes to the media uh they're very us centric nintendo are the best because they have departments you know like their european location i think it's germany is a central but then there is nintendo of america japan and europe and that's all all sort of not separate but kind of separate i I would worry i'd worry for us as media um if sony does do this and i would worry for the people that i've met at sony and i know who are lovely people who do a really good job actually Mm -hmm. um but the the, apparently they didn't even like the the story is that they didn't even know about this why oh wow i did not read that um and i suppose why would they if it's a u.s media people you know talking to the u.s pr jim ryan's from america I think uh, he's not Canadian, is he? I think he's American. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's a. I find it to be a strange situation. They usually have these PlayStation experiences, but they seem to be going in the but Nintendo that's, that's Direct the thing. route. I was like, why couldn't they have like on that day even said, "Oh, this evening we're going to have a, a pretty much a presentation on the the new console." The new PS5 and that's well, it's, that. It's, and... it's also kind of not news. Like, did anyone for a second believe they weren't going to call it the PlayStation Five? Well, that's it. Like, but I, I don't. I just. I just think it's really. It's. It's underwhelming. I think well, that's what. I, did anybody think they were going to take a, a a console family that they've had the PlayStation Vita, the PlayStation Portable, the PlayStation VR? Did they really think? Someone honestly thought Sony would ditch that brand name and maybe call it the PlayStation or or the PlayStation Next or something. Did you, did anybody really think mm. that, like that they will have as much as we all saw Xbox when they went from Xbox 360 to Xbox One? Everybody saw the reaction the same way that Battlefield won. The reaction those yeah. naming conventions got. I don't know how anyone really thought Sony were going to suddenly go, oh, the PlayStation One. You know, it's 
Yeah, like they're really not because it, it doesn't even seem weird to say PS5 if I'm honest. Um, no, because we've just all been saying it for so long, hmm. and that's just that. Um, like so, they've obviously like announced a couple of features on it. Yeah. Um, obviously there's a it's it it's gonna have a 4K drive. Yeah, in but it. like, but like you know. I I know I know like it's a bit like you should have had this, um. But it's there. The, the the thing that I'm really kind of interested in, it, they seem to have a lot of focus on the controller. Yeah, and I'm worried about that because Microsoft kind of did some of this with the launch of the Xbox One and they never yeah. bothered with it afterwards. So one of the things I remember writing about Forza 6, mm-hmm. I want to say it was 6, the launch game, is that uh, the vibration would change depending on your position of the triggers. And this isn't quite that. This is this is like they've said developers can program the resistance of the triggers so you can feel it, you know. Um pulling back a bone arrow. It's, it's kind of like whatever. It's kinda of like H D rumble. Well, this is the thing, but it's that everyone I, I, takes the piss out of. Yeah, and for me, I think it's quite interesting that they're focusing on this controller with these elements. Because if I'm honest, Sony have always been trying to do something. Mm like different when you're when you have this control in your hands and i think it's like yeah this is fine but you end up never fucking using it absolutely like that big button in the middle of the controller right now that's the map button exactly it's very weird it's very awkward no one there's not many games that come out actually the what game came out recently and you actually had to use the touchpad days gone that's it swipe up down left or right to different menus but like Good I'm not man. saying yeah, this won't one. be good. I'm not saying this won't be good. I'm oh, saying no, it's not a strange yeah. selling point because at the same time we, I suppose then, I suppose everybody knows it's going to be super powerful. Like you say, 4K uh, ray tracing, all that sort of stuff. But again, mm. that's kind of if devs program for it. Um, yeah. I, I mean, listen, I'm excited. Of course, I am. Of course, I want to play the of PlayStation course, course, Five and the like... Xbox Two or whatever they call it. Of course, I do. Yeah. Um, they still didn't confirm as well if it's like definite, like backwards compatible. Uh, they will, I think, they will have to do that. Well, they'll have um, to definitely do PS4. But if I'm honest, if they're releasing a console of the power that they say it's going to be, you should just be able to put in any Sony fucking game. <laughs> Did you see the image doing the rounds of um, the headline PlayStation Five announced, and then there's a picture of Skyrim and Resident Evil Four going <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, before we move on, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, mm-hmm. Do it in whichever currency you want. How okay. much is the PS5 going to cost at retail, at launch? How much are you going to be able to buy one for? Um, no, I think the thing is, do you think there'll be one model or two? One. Okay, one model then, yeah. I'd uh, say. I think they like the way the PS4 Pro sold, and if they can do a PS5 Pro, they will do that. Yeah, I think we're going to be going €600. Euro. Uh, what does that convert to? I need to. I need to convert that six hundred euro to. I just need to. to wow! Fuck! Five hundred and thirty-eight pounds. I mean, they've the, done it before. I, I'm gonna say. I think they will with with the whole with with what they're saying. I just think they will. Okay. I think a lot of people will expect it. You see, so they'll be okay to do it day one. Oh, I don't know. Well, you know, people are quite happy to. You know, oh look, the new iPhone. It does. It's got another camera. Eleven thousand. Exactly. Sorry, one thousand one hundred. Yeah, no probs. Uh, I'm going to say four nine nine. I don't think they can breach that five mark because Microsoft won't. Uh, I think we'll be looking at the similar price. I mean, if I look, if I do Xbox One X price right now on Google, uh, we've got four four nine, or well three nine nine at Microsoft Store. That's not bad. Um, I think this still is a lot. Though, isn't I, oh Christ! Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's the Fallout bundle. No wonder. That's probably they, they've not. It looks like they've knocked off 150 quid for that. Um, I reckon. Actually, is that the Xbox One X? Hang on a sec. Yeah, it is. It is robot white edition. I forgot they did a white X. That's gorgeous. I like that. Anyway, I'm saying 499, and you're saying mm-hmm. 600 euros. Yeah. Okay. Listen. Uh, actually, yeah, before go before go we go, go to this correspondence, what if you were to go for one launch title? What's going to be? Thoughts. Oh, uh, PS4. GTA yeah. uh, Gran Turismo. Do you think so? Absolutely. One hundred percent. I'm going to be really bold in saying this that I think we'll get Horizon Two. It's ridiculous, I know, but at the same time, is it ridiculous? No, it's not because you think when Horizon Zero Dawn came out. So yep. if I again, I'm going to use Google again on a podcast. Horizon Zero Dawn DLC release date. Uh, 
Uh, not review. I fucking know one of them. Release date was November the 7th, so two years ago. So it'll be three years by the time uh, the PS5 comes out. Oof. Could be. I, like, we've heard nothing. February 2017, so it'll be three and a half years from the original game's release. Yeah, and if you think of yeah. Gorilla's attachment with like the likes of Killzone launching and stuff with the I'll PS4. I'll tell you what, there's a stat for you. Horizon Zero Dawn is the fifth best-selling PlayStation 4 video game. Wow. T- 10 million sold. Uh, that only games that's behind is God of War. There's no way one of them will be ready. The Last of Us Remastered, well, two will have been out, so we might get Last of Us 2 Remastered launch. Marvel Spider-Man, I think it's a bit too soon, having that they've only just yeah, bought them. So well. Uncharted 4, again, the, you know, the only game, yeah. in fact, close to it, you got Gran Turismo Sport. And I could see, I could absolutely see a GT Gran Turismo, what would it be, 6? Yeah. 7? And yeah, I could see it. I could see it. There you so go, we you get it first. Horizon Zero Dawn 2 and Neck 3. <laughs> you know what? Probably. <laughs> um, listen to correspondence. We didn't get to some of these last week, so we're going to get to them this week. Thomas at LlamaFluff42 wants to know, Adam, what's the daftest misunderstanding you had as a child? He said he used to think that radio ads, especially the terms and conditions... <laughs> Could only be done by really fast talkers. You know, they get them. Just made no fucking sense. Yep. Um, it's not really like a misunderstanding. It's more like, it's more of a kind of like, am I misunderstanding this? But then at the same time, why am I seeing this? And that would be the time the Penelli pen was announced. The, sorry, the what pen? The Penelli pen. I don't so, know what that is. I don't know if you remember that, but you know those like when you're w- watching TV and those f- fucking ads come on where they're like, right. buy this and get 40,000 other pieces of item to use on it and all these things. It's like, ring up now and we'll throw in another one for absolutely free. It was one of those kind okay. of ones. And it was the Penali pen. And the thing was, it was just a fucking pen, but it was being advertised as stainless steel, unbelievable writing pen. And... Not only could you write with it, but you could also stab, like, tin cans with it. Yeah. Right. Do you remember this at all? Yeah, I remember them now. I've, uh, yeah, I've looked them up. And I can't, for the life of me, I, I just did not understand why. Why? Why? Why, why, why do I need this? Why would you need a pen to jab into, like, tin cans? And right. Am I misunderstanding something there? Like, do you when you have a pen, do you just all of a sudden go right? How many can of beans there? Boom. No, definitely exactly. don't do that. So, um, yeah, that's just the first thing that kind of comes into my head. What about you? <laughs> I can't think of one. I genuinely can't think of a strange misunderstanding. It's I a hard one. I just, I genuinely can't. Um, so we're going to have to move on because I, I can't just sit again. Hmm, I can't. Um, so we'll go to another question from Thomas. <laughs> if you were the star of a human version of Untitled Goose Game with a remit to frustrate and annoy those around you, what would you get up to? He says he'd put his bin out on the wrong night and laugh maniacally as the whole street followed his lead. Chaos. Um, I thought about this and then, to be honest, nothing tops a thing that someone already did. And that is, there's a video that goes around of, like, <laughs> just people standing waiting for a bus or just, like, walking down the street or something. And some absolute bollocks from behind runs up with, like, a black bin liner and just literally throws it over their head and pulls it the whole way down and just runs away. And they're left, like, in complete panic, ripping off the bag. And sometimes they'll just chase after the guy. And, like... It's assholeish, and I'd be raging if someone did it to me, but it's so funny to watch. And <laughs> if that game existed, then that'd be brilliant. There's also the hilarious game of um, it's like on PC. You like you must type in a website or some like some link, and it just immediately starts this game of this like guy standing at a bus stop, and you must fart sneakily, right, without getting caught. You know, as soon as you yeah. like, like, and that's just like great as well, but. That's kind of not really acting like a goose, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. But I th- it's it's mainly about just being a being a bit of a prick, and I think the bin liner <laughs> thing is is kind of where I'd be at. I think I'd just take people's car keys off them so they couldn't drive like assholes. Because um, <laughs> so, so many people speed and cut corners, forget their indicators because because your indicators are so fucking far away from that steering wheel. After all, it's difficult to reach, isn't it? 
Yeah. Um, I think I'd just take keys away from people so they couldn't drive anymore. Uh, yeah. Speak, speaking, of, speaking of, I, I actually do agree with that because it was only like last week. Um, there's a huge roundabout in in the in my town, or whatever, and uh, I was walking up the street, and this like this old man was completely driving the opposite way around the roundabout, <laughs> and it yep. was carnage. Like he wasn't stopping, and everyone was just kind of moving out of the way for him. It was pfft. so. I agree with your one. That sounds like those old jokes, doesn't it? Like oh. You know, how did that, that car end up crashed at the roundabout? Because someone said, Oh, take you know, go straight on at the roundabout and they just drove over it because Yeah. Was, you know, or, or like take the third you know, take the third uh, take the exit on the right and you know, they just kept going round for hours and hours and hours because there was no <laughs> right turn, you know. Um Thomas also wants to know what game title jars or grates on you the most. He says he's never come to terms with Bravely Default. Mine's gonna be an obvious one. Some of those Final Fantasy names. Like Duo oh, really? Decima, you know, like whatever. They just, you know, the ones with like colons and yeah, yeah. I know. Underbirth, another one's Underbirth XE. What are they called? You know, under oh, yeah, Underbirth. No, Undernight in Birth XE LATE. Then it's got like a open bracket CL dash R. Like, the... yeah, Jesus. they're all they're all pains in the ass. Yeah, those ones. Are like, I I don't hate them all because I do enjoy like. The kind of adventure sound to those titles, but th- that one you just mentioned, yeah, that can fuck right off. Mm-hmm. Um, of recent, and it's not really, it's not, it's not an, a name like anything like what you just said. Yeah, but I, I don't really get on with Astral Chain. See, I'm thinking more along the lines of like long names, like yeah, and even see, that's... Dragon Quest Eleven. So it's Dragon Quest Eleven S Echoes of the Elusive, Echoes of... A- Elusive yeah. Age Definitive Edition. It's like, come on, <laughs> and, and you know, but not just. I don't like I don't like it when game names are stylized and that's the way you're supposed to write them. So do you remember when Grid was capital G, capital R, oh, lowercase yeah. I, capital D, um, or like Wipeout? So is like is that Wipe with the capital W then Out with the capital O? But one word, you know, uh, the Tom Clancy games. It bugs the life out of me that they still, you know, they've kind of stopped now. People kind of don't call it that anymore. It's just Ghost Recon Breakpoint. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, is it Tom Clancy's Watch Dogs? I don't even know, you know? I, I, oh, no way. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, what sight, sound, or smell instantly transports you back to your childhood, Adam? Um, I actually... This is this is interesting. It's not, it's not in any way groundbreaking, the answer, but only yesterday uh, I was in work and one of my work colleagues was drinking a tea and... I looked at it and I went, what the hell is that? And I picked it up and I just smelt it. And it smelt identical to those apple drops. Do you know those, like, they look like marbles almost, but they're just apple drops. Okay, yeah. And I yeah. used to eat them constantly when I was small. Like, all the time, apple drops. Like, they they were just always on the go for me. And I haven't in years gone near them. So that was just a real, like, sniff and just boom, <laughs> right back to then. Okay, mine would be. Do you know certain pubs still smell quite sort of hop, hoppy and you know that kind of. Oh thing. yeah, yeah. Like, that just takes me back to being a kid in a pub and just, just stale cigarettes oh, and stuff. Uh, not so much that. Um, <laughs> just like that. Did you ever go to the pub of... with those situate like? Yeah, I've been to pubs like that, but that doesn't take me back to my childhood. Like the hop smell. Or the, is it, what you weren't smoking hop, major when you were eight? Uh, Thirteen, I was smoking. <laughs> um, yeah, like no, that smell really takes me straight back. Straight back to being a kid and like the the majesty of a pub where you could barely see over the the you know the bar and like everyone's drinking and everyone looks a bit frightening because they've all got like you say cigarettes and and alcohol yeah. um, just takes me back and I, I it, it's a fond smell um, I wouldn't say quite childhood but sometimes you know when I mean people don't do it now but then when someone lights a cigarette in a car mm-hmm. it's got a certain smell to it when it's in a car I don't know why and that always yeah. throws me back as well. Uh, last one for this week. Lyle Carr asks, what is the most obscure or unknown game that you love? He says his example is he likes the oddness that is the PlayStation 2's Mr. Mosquito. Mr. Mm. Mosquito? Mine um... would be kind of a specific example. Parasite Eve, before it came out over here, I imported on the PlayStation from America. And I was always decently ahead of the curve with that kind of stuff like i got resident evil when it was called biohazard you know that sort of stuff mm-hmm. and tekken like you know 
But for me, I think Parasite Eve, and I would say that's not a big series now, for sure. But back then, even then, nobody seemed to know about it. And I, I loved that first Parasite Eve. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, I think for me, it's probably uh, MDK. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just remember playing that in PC a lot. Murder, Dead, Kill, which is yeah, just that, that, that looked amazing at the time. Yeah, it looked amazing. It was weird. It, like, you didn't really know what you were kind of doing and stuff. Yeah. Um, that was one. And then, like, one that wasn't... It's not really as obscure, but I do remember playing a lot of Dungeon Keeper. Okay. Um, that was another weird one. But, yeah, those kind of ones. There's probably way more as well. There's, there's, like, when you think back to games... I was only having this conversation the night, but when, I was, when you think back to certain games, when you were young, you played everything. But, like, I mean, even more recent... Well, more like Asura's Wrath. Would you count that? Yeah. Or like Lost Odyssey on Xbox 360. That's one of my favourite RPGs, but... Is that good? Oh, is it good? Do you like Final Fantasy VII? Because it's uh, that. Yeah. It's that. It is that. Is it really? I've it always... absolutely <laughs> that. Like, this has just become a very kind of one-on-one personal conversation now all of yeah. a sudden. But, like, I've been always intrigued by that game. I mean, um, it's difficult because there's loads of games... I wouldn't say they were obscure, but like Condemned, that game. Mm. Like, all right, it got a sequel, but you know, like Viva Pinata, but that's not unknown. You know, yeah. I'd, these are games I'd love to come back somehow, but you know. Yeah, like where would you stand with Fear Effect? Now I know the last one that came out. I think what See, last year was. I liked it at the time. I liked it at the yeah. time. Um, I don't know that they hold up very well. What was the name of that EA game? Um, it was on Wii where it was like a puzzle game oh, and it was really it was oh god what was it called I might have to look it up EA so oh, EA Wii puzzle game and it had it had some like big name attached to it um, Boom Blocks do you remember that? Boom Blocks I remember Boom Blocks let me get that, that, that cover up there it was a fantastic game it, what was oh it? I remember it really, that bastard yeah. monkey and sheep that was really well known for some there was someone who worked on it yeah Steven Spielberg. <laughs> I actually <laughs> just saw that. A yeah. Steven Spielberg yeah. game. So I, I, I don't know that that's under unknown. I mean, again, you wouldn't hear much about it. No. Do you remember, like, Ubisoft's The Club? I really like oh, that yeah. game. Yeah. And I mean, again, I don't know that it's un, unknown, but Mad World. Mad World. Yeah. See, you there's know, a couple of things that are like, pff, Jesus. There was Army of Two, but they were poo. Uh, they were. I mean. I remember a game we covered. I never got round to playing it, but everyone raved about it at the time. It was an Xbox 360 and PS3 game called El Shaddai. Oh, I remember it kind of had the cover was like... It was very ethereal. It was very colourful. Yeah. Ocean-y kind of looking. Yeah. Like, I mean, what about The World Ends With You? Yeah, that that was great. I mean, they've they've, they've, they've done that since. So, I mean, again, I'm I'm really reaching reaching now, but Ghost Trick. Ghost Trick. Yeah, great game. Um, yeah, I mean, you tell us yours in the comment below. Whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on Spotify, well, you can't comment on Spotify, but Twitter you can at God Is a Geek. Tell us which of your games you think you love, but they're very obscure. And do send us more questions at God Is a Geek on Twitter, Facebook.com/slash God Is a Geek, YouTube.com/slash God Is a Geek. Any of those places, or at Adam Zokes or at GBSF, you can send us questions directly. It's fine, or email them podcast at God Is a Geek.com. And if you did enjoy this podcast, normally there's three or four voices on here, but this week it's just the two of us. Um, you still get it early if you go to patreon.com slash geek and drop $1 a month to get early access, usually three to four days before anyone else hears it. Last week was a bit later because of embargoes, and we've held off on talking about some games this week to avoid doing that too regularly for our Patreons. So there's that. Uh, Adam, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, man. And to everyone else... Thank you for listening, and we will speak to you next week or whenever you choose to listen. Bye-bye for now.